before we look at the next sufficient assumption question, I have to talk about uh, the idea of sets, the idea of relationships between sets. And I know it sounds all very abstract, but I'll make this as down to earth as possible by reference to cats, right? Nothing more down to earth than cats. So when I say cats, right, I mean, I'm not talking about any particular cat, your cat, my cat, none of those stray cats. Rather, it's just the idea of cats. It's a set, right? It's a set. It's like your cat. Hey, where's your cat? Your cat's right here. Where are my cats? My cats are right over here. What about the pack of stray cats that roams around the neighborhood? Oh, that, that's that's uh, those those five guys over here, right? So, like when I say cats, it's just just every single cat in existence goes into this set. But I'm not talking about any of them. Rather, I'm just pointing at the set, right? Cats. You want to think about the set itself, this abstract entity itself, as a real object, okay? And this object, this abstract entity, this set, has properties. For example, it can have relationships, right? Let me let me conjure up a different set, a different abstract entity entity called mammals, right? Again, I'm not talking about this particular elephant, right? Or this particular tiger that performed a trick on the TV show that you were watching. Rather, I'm just talking about the set, the idea of mammals. How shall I draw the circle? Should I draw like this? Well, if I draw like this, it seems to suggest that cats and mammals are non-intersecting, which is strange, right? Because we all know cats are, of course, mammals. So this doesn't seem like it's the right way to draw the picture. How about how about how about if I just drew like this, where it just kind of intersected a little bit? Well, okay, it's a little better, right? You know, I, I, these are my cats right over here. I think my cats are mammals, but this picture seems to suggest that they're not mammals. Okay, so let's try again. What if I drew it like this? Well, there we go. Now I think we've got the right picture. Of course, every single cat is a mammal, and on top of that, there are non-cat mammals, right? For example. The set of things we call dogs, the set of things we call camels, right? The set of things we call bears, right? All the other non-cat mammals are in here. But forget those other things for a second, because I just want to talk about these two entities: the set of things we call cats and the set of things we call mammals. They have a relationship. You see that they they have a relationship. It's a very specific relationship. The relationship that they have goes by many names. The first name I want to introduce you to is that of set and subset, right? And I think it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Set and subset. Now, from the other direction, it would be set and what do you call this? Superset. Okay, it depends on which whose frame of view you're taking. If you're taking the mammal's frame, right? From the mammal's perspective, cats are its subset. But now, if you take the cat side. Right? Imagine you're a cat. You're looking at mammals. Well, the, what are mammals to you? Cats. Well, that's a superset. Right? It's bigger than you. Okay. So, so just remember, it goes it goes up like this. Subset, and the larger one is superset. So this is a really useful idea. Now, the thing is, it's kind of cumbersome to have to draw out a picture like this every time you need to,、uh, every time you encounter this idea. Okay. So on the LSAT, we're going to use a different language. Not English. Not Scribbling out pictures of circles that eat other circles, right? We're going to use some logical notation to represent the idea of a set and superset. Okay, so the so the representation goes like this: cat, arrow, mammal. Okay, so remember this is the subset idea, and this is the superset idea. Now I already mentioned that they go by different names. So here I'll tell you another name. Right, the idea over here is called the sufficient condition, and the idea over here is called the necessary condition. And if you just think about this word "sufficient" and this word "necessary" for a second, I think you'll realize why this is called the sufficient. This is called the、uh, necessary, right? Because if I tell you that I have here with me Felix, who is a cat, isn't that sufficient for you to know something else about Felix? Right? I tell you, Felix here is a cat. This dot right here is Felix, right? And he's a cat. That's sufficient information. You know that cats are mammals. You therefore can infer that Felix is a mammal, right? So that's the sense in which this idea over here is sufficient. Now, why is mammal necessary? Well, let's imagine a different scenario, right? I tell you, I have a animal in my house, and his name is not Felix this time. His name is Eddie Izzard, and Eddie Izzard is a lizard, which means he's not a mammal, right? He's not a mammal. You see, if I tell you that. 
again, you can tell me something else about Eddie Izzard. If he's not a mammal, then he cannot be a cat, right? Because, you know, where in this picture is Eddie? Over here, outside of the mammal set. If he's outside of the mammal set, there is no chance in hell he's going to be inside the cat set because the cat set is completely subsumed under the mammal set. So that's the sense in which mammal is necessary. There isn't like a chronological priority. I don't think it makes sense to think about, think about this relationship in, in terms of cr like time, right? But humor me for a second. It's almost like we're saying if you want to be a cat, you first have to be a mammal, right? That's the necessary condition. Okay, and the arrow is what indicates sufficiency to necessity is it what is what indicates subset to superset now even if i write the arrow this way it doesn't change a thing okay it doesn't change a thing you just look where the arrow is pointing the arrow always points from the sufficient condition from the subset idea to the superset idea okay so like this is torturous because english readers read from left to right not not the other way around so there's no good reason to write it like this but i just want to you know i just want to point out that even if you do like you know decide to write from right to left it you follow the arrow okay just follow the arrow now it's really really important that you get this idea straight okay you, you, you don't want to be confused about this because outside writers are going to try very very hard to confuse you for example they're going to tell you something like uh, you know i have in my house an animal named Rosita and I, I'm going to tell you is that Rosita is a mammal right Rosita is a mammal and you know that all cats are mammals what does that mean does that mean you can draw the conclusion that Rosita is therefore a cat no of course not because you know what Rosita is a cheetah related to cats but not a cat not a house cat see Pictorially, what's happening is that if all you know is that Rosita is a mammal, then all you know is that Rosita is somewhere in this giant set. It could be here, right? Or it could be here. So you cannot draw any conclusions. All right, let's try one more exercise. Let's say that I tell you that Nutmeg is not a cat, right? I have an animal here. Her name is Nutmeg. She's not a cat. Okay, fine. Again, can you draw any conclusions? Do you know if nutmeg is a mammal or not? You have no idea. If nutmeg is not a cat, you just know that she doesn't. she's not in this set. Okay, where is she? I don't know. She could be here or she could be here. If she's here, then she's a mammal. If she's here, she's not a mammal. So I can't draw any conclusions. So right there, we actually just cover all the logical possibilities. So just review that real quick. If you know something is a cat, follow the arrow. That thing must be a mammal, right? Of course, pictorially, it makes sense. If you're in the subset, of course, you're already in the superset. By the same logic, if you know something is not a mammal, that is to say, something is outside the superset, then look, there's no chance in hell it's going to be in the subset. It's way the hell out over here. So if something is not a mammal, it cannot be a cat. Those are the two situations where you can draw valid conclusions. There are two situations where you cannot draw valid conclusions. If I tell you something is a mammal, that is to say it's in the necessary condition or it's in the superset, you don't know if it's in the subset. It could be in the subset or it could be not, right? It could be a cat, it could be a dog. The other condition where you cannot draw a conclusion is if I tell you something is outside of the subset, meaning something is not a cat. If it's not a cat, again, like it could be a dog, in which case it's inside the mammal set, it's, it's still a mammal, or it could be a lizard, in which case it's outside the mammal set, it's not a mammal. Okay, so those are the four possible situation scenarios that you'd be confronted with on the outside. You want to be very, very clear not to confuse those situations.